Suppose we want to track an ant now. An ant is going to have a location and a weight because that's what we've decided that we care about for ants. So location and weight, we could uh, have x and y coordinates and then weight is some other number so we could put three numbers together. Or a location sounds like a position, so we could use a position that we've already defined, the poson that we define, and add a weight to it. Uh, either of those choices is fine. I'm going to go with this choice where we use a posin and another number for our ant. So we have a new type ant with one variant ant, and I might be interested in whether an ant is home or not, where I define home to be, you know, posin zero, zero, the origin in our coordinate system. So that means ant, is, ant at home is going to take an ant and it's going to return a Boolean value. My data analysis then for ants said I want a new type and I'm going to have a posin and a number inside it. Let's make some examples for ant at home. Uh, that means it's going to be open for n test, open for n ant at home with some ant, which I write uh, by using the ant constructor. And then that first field needs to be a posin. So that's why I've written open paren posin. And then going back to the posin data definition, that means I need uh, zero and zero. I need two numbers. I picked zero and zero. Uh, and then for the rest of ant, I need a weight, which is a number. So let's say 0.0001 kilograms. Uh, and then in this particular example, that ant is at the origin, so we'll return true. Um, in this other example, it's an ant of the same weight. The weight turns out not to factor into this problem. Uh, it's just a question of whether the posin is the origin, and in this case we've made one that's not, so false. I only had one variant to drive my examples, the ant variant, um, but I had two different kinds of results, so it's a good idea to have examples that cover the space of results, particularly when you have booleans, when you have only two kinds of results. Next step, template. What does this template do in this case? In this case it says we've got ant at home that takes an ant A, and so we do a type case on ant A where we're going to have a location and a weight to work with. This is what uh, our previous templates looked like, but in this case the template is not complete yet. And the reason I say the template's not complete is we know a little bit more. We know that weight is a number, but loc, that's a posin. A posin is some func uh, type that we defined ourselves. That means we know there's x and y pieces, but also, but a better way to think about it is we know it's a posin, and so we want some helper function that deals with posins in the same way that we have a function that deals with ants. And that is home function is going to take a posin and do something with it. We can write the whole template for that is home function as well. Why not just inline x and y, the handling of x and y and n at home? Well, because we want to stay consistent with our choices that we made in representation. We deferred location to a separate type posin, so we're going to defer the work on posins to a separate function is home that works on the posin. Now for the body step, we can do these independently. We can proceed with ant at home by itself, assuming that we have some is home function, and then we proceed with is home function following the rest of the recipe as well. For ant at home, when we uh, look at our examples, we'll discover that, uh, in fact, we don't need the weight. We just want the is home part. That already tells us exactly what we want in. And then for the is home part, um, you know, we look at our examples that we would write out for that, and uh, we want to return true if both x and y are zero. So the interesting thing here uh, in this particular example is that our data analysis led us to refer to a different data definition, a different defined type in our new defined type, and that at the template step led us to defer to a different function.